Good evening, good afternoon, and welcome to Ascendo Traders. This is our 30-day stock market challenge. We are on day 20. Just another one of our little cartoons we like to share. Try to bring a little humor as we go through the ups and downs. Uh, really should, I had another roller coaster one. I might do that one tomorrow. Uh, off of this huge second largest day today. Um, but, you know, a lot of people when they're looking at their 401ks, uh, certainly not great news. So, uh, today we're going to talk about the three musketeers, and that is RSI, Stochastic, and MACD. And basically, this is a play off of the invest tools, three green arrows up, three red arrows down. Even Ryan uh, Litchfield from Better Trades has a three amigos thing. Basically, it's a play off of that. Uh, what I want to do today, uh, you'll see that this is really just our first part of our to our video here. We're going to do two videos. Today is just to get you comfortable with RSI, Stochastic, and MACD. Tomorrow we'll actually get into chart examples. So again, today is the definition side. Today is the foundation side. And in our next video, we'll get into actually looking at charts and talking more about the rules. Although we will discuss some rules today, but tomorrow we really will use the live charts tomorrow. So first up, we have Relative Strict Index. And we basically call that RSI. And as you can see, it's a technical momentum indicator that compares the magnitude of recent gains in an attempt to determine overbought and oversold conditions. As you all know, uh, to quote John McCain today, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> uh, basically, RSI, we're looking for overbought and oversold. Overbought or oversold. Um, it's generally recommended using settings of 70 and 30. I know some people that use 80 and 20, but they also, you know, um, use that with stochastics. They just like to be consistent. And there is an overbought and an oversold level. So, if the RS line right is starts below 30, so it's down in the 20s and the zeros, whatever, and as it rises above 30, it's now considered to be bullish for the stock that it is, um, you're using to look at RSI with. Conversely, when it falls below, meaning it's above 70, and now drops below 70, this is considered a bearish signal. Both of these signals um, have more validity when they're followed or confirmed with volume. So let's take a look. Here we have the overbought uh, line of 70, and we have the oversold line of 30. So in our line here we have um, this stock Dell that is in the overbought range and you can see that this is sort of grayed in here this level above 70 and that is giving us a signal that again it's overbought and um, you know you probably want to tighten it your stock. It doesn't mean it's going to go down the next day. As you can see uh, once we get above 70, we can stay above 70 for a while. It's not something that it hits 70 and breaks down. Um, uh, although we do see on our 30, it did bounce at 30, but they can also stay below 30. Um, but as we fall down, back down below 70, and if we were to draw a line straight up from here, you can basically see that matches up with the consolidation and then the first real push down. So what we're looking for is when... Uh, RSI falls below 70. Now over here, even though we never really got below 30, you can kind of also see that as we bounce off the 30 and, and kind of inch below it, that was uh, a bullish signal here. And also here and here, we kind of got a uh, bullish signal. You see we never really got below 30. So this kind of also goes back to my theory about knowing the heartbeat of some stocks. And you'll get to, once you get comfortable with your indicators, you'll get to know how well they are with that particular stock. So what about divergence? This is another way that we can use RSI. Um, we, as you can see in our example here, we have a stock that is trending up. And if the price is trending up or down, as that stock is trending, um, and yet... RSI does not make these higher highs or lower lows with it, then that is divergence. So in this example, the, the position made a higher high, came up, 
made another high. But our RSI actually made a high here, and on the second push up, did not make it as higher as here. This is divergence. Again, this is a, um, an indicator that you can use to say, all right, it might be time for me to tighten my stops and get out of my position because RSI is diverging with the, the price volume, the price chart. Next, we have MACD, Moving Average Convergence Divergence. This is a trend-following momentum indicator that shows the relationship between two moving averages of a price. And so basically, we have fast and slow stochastic. And that's what you see here. We have the dashed and we have the straight solid line. And our signals are given when one line crosses either down or up through the other. And obviously, this down means to sell and the up means to buy. What are our trading rules? Well, as I was just indicating, the main thing we like to trade are these crossovers. And when they crossover, uh, when MACD falls below a signal, it's considered bearish. When it rises above, crosses up above a signal, it is considered bullish. Once again, we're going to talk about divergence. And this is when... Um, the crossovers that we're seeing, um, once again, do not follow the stock. Meaning the crossover, when a stock's making a higher high, like with, with RSI, but the divergence of our indicator is showing that it did not go as high on our indicator. That is, again, another signal that the current trend may be over. So let's take a look. So here we have a sell signal because the MACD line crossed down below the signal line and that is basically where the stock began to go down similarly as we begin to um, cross right right back above that gives us our buy signal and that's when it went up here we go again we're crossing down and that was when the stock, this position began to sell so again we're looking for the crossovers crossing down crossing off um, we're going to move on to stochastic. Stochastic is another momentum indicator that shows the location of a current close relative to high low range over a set of number of periods. That's another blah 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 thing there. Uh, all we're really looking for here is above 80 and below 20. So, readings below 20 are consider considered oversold. So, here's 20. When we get down in below it, that is considered oversold. Um, you can tighten your stops. You can pre prepare to get a um, into a long position. And just sort of like RSI, as we cross back up, that can give you a possible signal to get into a trade. Readings above 80 are considered overbought. So, here we're above 80. And that's basically when we topped out above 80s, where we topped out again. And even as we get, come up here and touch, that's also where the stock topped out. Here's that word again, divergence. And again, when a stock is making higher highs, but we don't see that in our indicator, that is a, a sort of something for us to look at to say, possibly this trend is over. So again, here we are, here's our 80 line, and the, I, what I want to show you with this is that um, just like RSI, stochastic can stay above 80 for a while. Just because it gets up there doesn't mean sell, it can stay up there and go even higher. Um, as it comes back down, that, that's probably where you're going to get your confirmation. Now, it's real hard to see, but you can see here that the stock is making higher highs, but RSI, stochastic here is actually making a lower high and so that is uh, showing us a little divergence with the stock okay so now we've gone through um, the technical definitions the book uh, book definitions of what these three musketeers are st stochastics RSI and MACD 
In part two of our video, we're going to talk about why I have them all up here on one chart. I'm not looking at them separately. I'm looking at them together for confirmation. And we'll talk about putting them on your charts. And we'll talk about, again, our trading rules, our divergence rules. All of that will come in our part two video. So thanks a lot. And I will see you guys next time.